Hello Floss Tube. This is take number three. Because the first time my camera was full on my phone and just now on the computer I said hello FaceTube. So anyway I'm a little confused and I'll explain all that in just a minute. But I hope that you'll stay with me. My name's Vanessa. I live in Georgia. This is my first Floss Tube video. So I want to start by telling you a little bit about myself. You can already see I'm a little bit crazy. But that's okay, because the first step to getting help is admitting that you have a problem. And I already know I'm crazy. So, anyway, um, I am in my mid, almost mid-50s. I am the mother to a 30-year-old son, who I will talk about a little bit more in just a second. And um, I am currently single. Not looking to mingle, just so you know. Um, I have been cross-stitching and doing all kinds of needlework since I was five years old. I had a babysitter that kept me when I was younger, and she did cruel embroidery work. And I remember her always stitching on the little hymnal figures. I didn't really like those, but um, she did, so that was fine. And she stitched them while she babysat with me, and then one day I said, I want to do that. So she taught me how to do cruel embroidery work. I didn't really like it so much as a kid, so I didn't keep it up. Um, I did do a couple of things, but it just went in my jam. I didn't like doing all those different kind of stitches. And my grandmother on my father's side is a quilter, and my mother has always, or not has always, because she doesn't anymore, but when I was younger, she sewed um, garments and made all of my clothes until I was in fifth grade and when I started fifth grade school and we started going school shopping she said what patterns do you want me to make you for starting school clothes and I said I want a store-bought outfit I didn't know then how precious it was to have pretty handmade clothes and I since have regretted that comment but I'm sure I got lots of store-bought outfits from then on because once you say you don't want something, you don't get it anymore. So then um, every summer, I spent the summers at my mother's beauty salon. And one of her customers on Saturday mornings owned a needle workshop. And at the time that I started um, working with Miss Dennis, I could my mom's uh, uh, hair salon was in the bank building in a downtown area in Georgia. And so I could walk because it was safe to walk by yourself as a kid in the 70s. And I could walk down this town street to Mrs. Dennis's Dennis Art Needlework um, cross-stitch shop. So I would go down there with her on Saturdays. And she said that she would pay me to straighten up the yarn room. Well, I was 11, so I thought, oh, that would be fabulous. And so she paid me, I don't remember what, but... I saved enough money in, from 11 to 16 to buy my first car, so she paid me enough to buy a car. So I would straighten up the yarn. She had hanks of uh, Persian yarn that she sold by the pound or ounce or whatever, and they hung on dowel rods, just one after the other after the other, in the needlepoint room. Each room, her, her shop was in an old house, and so each room was a different needle specialty. There was two rooms of cross stitch, there was a framing room, there was a needle point room, and a cross, uh, crochet and knitting room, and then um, there was a storage room and then her little office um, and places where we kept the patterns. I loved working there. So I did that for a number of years, and I did, well I worked there till I was 16, but then eventually when I was old enough to legally be hired, I think that was probably when I was 13, I think. She said that she would pay me to teach people how to cross stitch because she had already taught me how to cross stitch by that time. And I was like, oh, okay. So she taught me how to, you know, what she wanted me to teach people to cross stitch. And so I started giving 60 second courses to people that wanted to learn to cross stitch. And she had a little um, bistro table and two chairs in the front room. And I would sit there with the new cross-stitch person and say, you can do this as an 11-year-old, because if I can do it, you can do it. 
I taught many, many people to cross stitch. Um, I would love to see how many of them still keep up with it today, but I lost touch with her when her shop closed uh, many years ago. And um, so I don't, I don't know how that worked out. But I kept cross stitching for many years. And when I first got married to my first husband, I had come across, I was a licensed manicurist, and one of my customers, her uh, sister-in-law, worked for Plaid Industries, and that happened to be in our local town, and they were looking for model stitchers, and I was like, oh, that sounds like so much fun, so they would pay me to cross stitch, and I was like, I'm all in, so I would cross stitch, hold on, one. okay, I'm back, sorry about that, um, it's so nice having the Geek Squad live with you, um, so anyway, I started teaching people how to cross stitch and then I found myself um, stitching for plaid enterprises at doing some model work. So that led to me then stitching for Vanessa Ann collection, Lanyard designs, Jeanette Cruz cross stitch and plaid enterprises. And I did that for a number of years, like five, six, seven years. And one night I was sitting in our living room crying, cross stitching. And my husband's like, I thought you were doing this because it was fun. And I said, I am. I really do enjoy this. But this is just impossible to get this finished in the time frame they want it done in. And he's like, then quit doing it. And I was like, oh, what a concept. So that was the end of my model stitching career because Plaid Enterprise started putting some very hard deadlines on me. And I had a career. I mean, I was a licensed manicure. So I did artificial nails for ladies 45 hours a week and it was an hour from home so I was busy I had a I didn't have a new baby at that time but I you know I was busy so then um I didn't stitch for a number of years after that I, I guess I was kind of burnt out and then I picked it back up after my son was born and I did a few things for him and I did things for people for Christmas and all that and then life just got hard and I just thought screw it I'm not gonna do this anymore um, and I didn't do it for probably 15 years. And then I have, looking back on life, um, in the last four years, which I'll tell you about that in a second, um, I've realized that doing cross-stitch was probably some of the happiest times of my life. So I picked it back up. But in the meantime, when I wasn't cross-stitching, I did, um, do some knitting. Um, Miss Dennis had taught me how to knit, but never how to read a pattern. So a local yarn shop opened in our town and I went and signed up and learned to knit. And the funny thing was when I got to the class, a girl that used to work at Dennis Art Needlework with me that used to also be a nail customer was in the class with me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how in the world are you? So we had fun catching up and we still stay in touch um, today. Not often, but you know, I could reach out to her and she would answer me. And um, so I, Cross, or excuse me, I knitted a afghan for a friend's baby, and that was all I knitted. I, I, I don't know. I liked it. I just, I know the, I know what quality flosses and yarns and things like that, how much better of a project you get using those, and I just wasn't financially in the place to afford those things, and I didn't want to do something halfway, so I didn't knit or crochet with yarns from the other stores so then I during the quarantine I taught myself by watching YouTube videos how to crochet again because there again Miss Dennis taught me how to crochet but not how to read a pattern or what the stitches were called so I could make things but I didn't know what I was making or what the stitches were called or any of that so I taught myself how to crochet during quarantine and that's been a lot of fun. I've made a queen size afghan for my son that the only thing I have to do is put the finishing, uh, like binding for lack of a better word around it. And then when I was 39, I decided that I wanted to learn to quilt because I had wanted to learn to quilt while my grandmother was alive and I never took the time to do that. And so I regretted that. So I found myself going through divorce number two and I decided that I would start to quilt found a wonderful quilting group of ladies. We went and quilted 
uh, once a month, I believe, and um, we quilted in the quilt shop. They had rented two spaces, so one space was the classroom and the other space was the shop. Had a lot of fun, made lots of quilts with them. My first quilt, uh, Miles is still using it, looks a little ratty. I told him I needed to repair some things on it, so I will do that eventually. And um, I've made lots of quilts since then. Not all of them are finished. The tops are finished, but they're not quilted and bound and all that. They're hanging in my closet um, as UFOs, unfinished objects, as people call them. And then um, during um, quarantine, I also decided that I would start cross-stitching some more. So I've been doing that pretty steadily since quarantine. And then um, also to tell you a little bit about me, I'm a very strong advocate for ovarian cancer awareness. I went in for a routine hysterectomy in May of 2017 and woke up with stage three metastatic ovarian cancer, much to the shock of myself and my physician and surgeon. Um, I have been in chemo for four years. Um, I have had minimal breaks, maybe a three month break, and then you have a scan and oh look, something else showed up on your scan, so you have to have chemo again. I've had lots of chemos. I've done great with all of them. I've been very positive through the whole matter because I told myself that day that God knew I was going to go on this journey. And if I believed and trusted him, then he knew the outcome. And all I had to do was be a good steward and uh, just fight the good fight. And that's what I've been doing. Um, I have lost my hair twice. It has since grown back twice. I've always had a lot of hair, so I still have a lot of hair, which I'm thankful for. The one thing I'm most thankful for is, you know, they say, be careful what you pray for. Because, as you can see, my hair is stick straight, and it has been my whole life. And all I've ever done is pray for curly hair. Well, it was so funny because one of my chemo sisters and I were talking one day, and she said, oh, my gosh, I just can't stand this curly hair. And I said, oh, was your hair not curly before chemo? And she's like, oh, no, my hair was stick straight. Her hair is in little tight ringlets now, and I thought, oh dear, I better quit paying about curly hair because I might just get really tight ringlets. And I don't want really tight ringlets because she hates them. So I quit paying, praying to have curly hair then, and thankfully, the Lord was not listening all those times I was praying for curly hair because I don't have it. But it's fine. Um, it's just hair, you know. And it will grow back if you've lost yours. And so through my cancer journey, I leaned hard into personal development and kind of reworked myself, my mind, and who I was. And I have documented that journey on my Facebook page. If any of you care to share that with anybody you know going through cancer, I did a lot of videos um, about your mindset, positivity, you know, this is life. You, you can't change it. The only thing you can do is put a smile on your face and go forward. And um, that page has helped a lot of people. So I will link that in the comments as well if you're interested. And I do also have a website that I'll list down there that you can get free information on if you're going through chemo. Um, some of the things that you need to do um, prior to going to the doctor or while you're on chemo that I found that have helped me and some of my chemo sisters. And then going through chemo, you make a lot of friends because you're all in that same room trying to survive and it puts a new perspective on life and so I would do my needlework there as well and talk to the other ladies some of them would go to sleep some of them didn't go to sleep such as myself and one lady next to me she always went to sleep the very first time I was having chemo I've had a group of different ladies every time I've had chemo because Luckily, I don't know if that's the right word, but I'm the only one of my chemo sisters that has had to keep staying in chemo. Um, everybody else has been deemed cancer-free or has had like a two-year window where they were cancer-free, but I have been in chemo solid the majority of the time since June of 2017. And um, so one of my chemo sisters and I were talking and I said, yeah, I don't ever go to sleep. And she's like, it's because you don't shut up. So there you go. I'm a talker. My granny said I could talk the horns off of, of a billy goat, and I probably could. So, having said all that, I want to tell you that you will see me searching for words occasionally, or occasionally I may just say the wrong word for something that I know is floss, and I might call it a spoon, because the chemo brain is a real thing. Um, 
I don't have to search for my words quite as much anymore because I am only on chemo every three weeks now, which is great. But I still talk too fast and my mouth gets ahead of my brain, which it did before I was sick too, but it just made it worse. So just bear with me. And um, it, like I said, if I can be any help or if my Facebook page can be any help to anybody you know going through cancer, I wish that you would share that with them because it would mean a lot to me and I pray that it will help them. So um, let me catch you up to date on life. Um, in January, you know, we were all talking about, oh, 2020 is over and we're going to get back to some semblance of a normal life and all that. Well, my son was home from Colorado. He is in Colorado getting his PhD. And he was home. And this is his last year of college. He was going to graduate in May. And his while he was home, his school said, oh, we're going to stay virtual spring semester as well. And I said, well, why don't you just stay home instead of paying all that rent on a place out there and, you know, just live back here, not have to pay rent. And he's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm just going to go back to school. So he goes back to school. So then in April, I get a phone call. He's like, you know, hey, mom, I think I'm going to come home because we're going to be virtual and I'm not really going to graduate in May because we decided to do this, this, and this. And I'm going to graduate in August instead. And I'm like, I think that's a great idea. So he was going to come home in July. I was like, that's great. So my mom, who had been at my house most of quarantine, she would come and stay. The first stint was for nine weeks when quarantine first happened. And then she would go home for a few days and then come back for two or three weeks or four weeks or five weeks or six weeks and then go home for a few days. So she had been here most of 2020. So Miles's room had suddenly become her room. And I was like, oh, dear. Well, Brian's going to have to sleep with me, I guess, when she comes home because our third room is my sewing room. And I'm sorry, I'm not getting rid of the sewing room. So um, Mama was coming to stay and visit and do whatever. And the day before Mother's Day, I went in there to check on her because I heard her hollering, and she could not get up. She couldn't take a step forward. She couldn't take a step backward. Her back was killing her. She has rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, and she walks around with a cane. So she couldn't take a step. She was in excruciating pain, and I said, I'm calling the paramedics. So I called the paramedics. They took her to the hospital. She had two major back surgeries within seven days. She was in the hospital for three weeks. She was in rehab for six weeks. She came home from rehab on July 8th. And on June 29th, my niece and I left to travel to Colorado by car so that we could, from Georgia to Colorado, so that we could help Miles move what he was bringing home and he would have an extra space of my SUV to bring some more stuff home. So we took three days getting to Colorado, saw some beautiful countryside, beautiful scenery, made a stop at Missouri Star Quilt, and just other fun things along the way. Um, Miles came home July 7th. My mom came home July 8th. Home meaning here, because while she was in rehab, I sold her house and packed it all up and moved her in here. So we have three households living in one household. We're kind of cramped. My garage is full of boxes from my mom's house, and we have furniture everywhere. So, once I get my sewing room together, which don't think it'll be next week or so, it'll probably be a month or so, but once I get it together, I will start filming in there um, and show you my quilts and whatnot. But for now, we're going to be at the dining room table, and you'll get to look at the kitchen. Or, you know, maybe I'll get a backdrop and hang some stuff up. I don't know. But this is how we're going to roll for now. So, the reason that you're here is because of cross stitch. So, I want to show you what I'm working on right now because I don't have anything finished to show you. So, I'll show you what I started um, after I almost finished. I sewed this, Glory Holt, but I'm out of gray and I didn't get to do the plug there. And I think maybe that plug I didn't get to do. So I've got to get some more gray. They gave you lots of floss. I don't know why I ran out of gray because you don't use very much. But I either ran out of it or lost it. So I think I ran out of it. So then I finished that as far as I could. And asked me have I ordered the gray floss yet. No, I have not. 
because I didn't think about it until I just now told you that I was out of it. So then I started working on this, and sorry that it trickled. And this is Farmhouse Christmas by Little House Needleworks. And this is the one I'm currently working on, Dairy Darling. So I've really enjoyed this. I can do about one every two days. I did this one almost in a whole day because I just sat there and stitched. It was last weekend. Um, and then I started this one yesterday, and I did all of that yesterday. So I'll work on this some more tomorrow or later today. I don't know. So that's my one thing I have in progress, um, which is funny. When I started watching the floss tubes, I wasn't, I didn't ever use the lingo. I wasn't used to all that lingo that whips and all that. I thought, who's getting a whipping? Why are you getting a whipping for cross stitching? So works in progress for anybody else that might be like me and go, what are they talking about? So this is my work in progress. And I guess this is too, since I'm out of gray. So then, um, since I haven't cross stitched in a number of years, I had to buy some supplies. Isn't that fun? So, and I'm sorry, I'm sitting at the table and the computer is on top of the box and I'm, I'm not very still either along from talking a lot. So anyway, I bought some stuff because I've been watching floss tube and I see, oh, that's pretty. I want to do that. Oh, that's pretty. I want to do that. So the first thing that I saw that I absolutely positively loved was on the Proper Stitcher Annie's show. And she is working on this. Tis the Season by Blackbird Designs out of the Home for the Holidays book. And um, I was familiar with Blackbird Designs because of their quilting things. I have, um, I think I have one of their patterns that is a Christmas quilt that has been a work in progress for about 10 years because I, I got some fabric that started. I didn't really like the fabric, but I got the fabric anyway. And you know, when you don't like something, you don't want to work on it. So I was familiar with them. I was really sad to hear of Barbara's passing and I, I do hope that the company will continue on um, with Alma, but I understand if it doesn't. Um, then I also, I, I saw this years ago and just loved it and just never bought it. So I got this and I'm actually going to mesh the two colorways because my dining room is red and black. And I think I'm going to do the black colorway for the pot and the red colorway for the flowers um, so that I can hang it in the dining room. I just love this. And this also is a Blackbird Designs pattern, Eleanor Rigby and Sweet Baby. So I probably am going to start this um, when I finish the Sweet Home thing or when my fabric comes. I have always was a cross stitcher that worked on just one of my things and one of the model things that I was working on, but I like this, keep things going, working on, oh, and I do have another work in progress. I'll show you that next time. I started it for Miles. He's a Harry Potter fan, um, and I planned on getting it done before he graduated. Luckily, he upped his graduation from May to this coming August, but he won't technically March till next May, so hopefully I'll get that done for him by then, but it's 24. As well. So I'll just save that to show y'all next week. And then with everybody showing their patriotic stuff, I just love, I didn't see this on anybody's page. I just saw it when I got to the Etsy shop where I bought these items, but um, Lady Liberty. So I'm going to do that and I'm actually going to make it into a drum or covered box. I don't know what that is. Maybe it is a drum. I just love that. So I'm going to work on that. And then I ordered um, a pattern off Etsy. And I'll have to link all this stuff below because I don't remember whose shop I got this from. But this is a cute little elephant and her mama. And it's a little bitty thing. It's like three by three or something. A 14 count. A hand, uh, well, that's centimeters. That's not going to help me much. Um, I think it is 
not in here, but it's, I want to say it's like less than five by five. It might be three by three, but a real sweet friend of mine just had her first grandbaby and their room is elephants. So I'm going to do that for, her name is Thea and I'm going to do it in shades of pink and purple. And then I just loved this. Um, I saw this on Etsy as well. Plum Street Samplers, A Country Winter. So I probably will do that um, sometime for next winter. And then I got, I love Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I do a lot of shopping with them for my quilting needs. So I got the floss to do the Tis the Season. They were out of the red. So I can't start that yet until I find the red. Uh-oh. I don't, I hope that didn't make my video stop. No, it looks like we're still going. And then I got um, the cross stitch line keepers. When I cross stitched before, I used the magnetic board. So I was fascinated to see they'd come out with these things because I don't have my magnetic board anymore. And then I'm having trouble seeing with the light that I'm using because it, I need it to be on this side of me and it's on this side of me and I can't move it to this side of me because there's no electricity plug out. So I got these little things that I saw Kimberly using that clip onto my readers. So I will just clip them onto the sides and they shine down on your fabric. So I'll do that. I'll do that real quick. Hold on. And there's two. One for each side. And then you can make it shine. I probably have to put batteries in it because it doesn't look like it's on. Oh yeah, it is on. It's not very bright in here, I guess, because it's dark. But anyway, I got these. I'll let you know how they work because I'll use them tonight. And um, that's all I got. So my plans are to still work on the. Uh, farmhouse Christmas and I really do want to start the tis the season so once my fabric comes I ordered it yesterday so when, <clears throat> excuse me once my fabric comes I will probably start on that and I'm going to start on the little elephant because it won't take me long to do that so I should have a lot of starts to show you next time and um, I will remember to bring the Harry Potter piece over here to show you and I will try to finish my she so she did um piece so that i can get that framed and or not framed but finished up because i want to finish it and hopefully i can show you that next time i would like to say that i'm going to do these once a week it may be more like two weeks but i'm going to shoot for once a week and see how that goes and i hope that you've enjoyed it leave me some comments let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk about or not talk about or what you like what you didn't like and I will see y'all in a few days. And like I end all of my motivational videos, I want you to know that in case you've not heard this today, that I love you and I'm glad that you were here. So thanks and happy stitching, everybody. Bye.